All right, looks like we're live. I'm Michael. Um, as you can see in the title of the video, it's going to be a com computer build. Um, everything's going into a uh, Corsair 4000D airflow case. Uh, we've got a Zotac 3070 Ti for the graphics card. Power supply is an EVGA 750 watt. The cooler is a Noctua NHD15 uh, Black Edition. Let's see. The CPU is a AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 8 core CPU. Um, I believe this is three fans. Let me see. Yes, three case fans. Uh, one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro uh, NVMe uh, 4.0, PCI Express 4.0 SSD. Some Trizen Z Neo, this is DDR4 RAM, and this is 64 gigabytes um, of RAM in two sticks, 3600 um, megahertz speed at 18 timing. Here, what is this? And this is a fan splitter. Uh, this will allow me to plug four, up to four, plant, uh, four fans into one um, fan header on the motherboard. And I believe, last but not least, yeah, is the motherboard. It's a Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus that everything will be attaching to. I guess let's go ahead and open this guy up. Hey, Felix. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Thanks for coming back. Um, so, the motherboard. And we're going to need the... IO shield. It comes with um, two SATA cables, which I don't think we're going to be using. Um, there's some screws for putting in the M.2 drive. Uh, this one looks like a low height. Not sure about that. This is more standard, so we'll use one of these to put in the NVMe solid state drive. So don't need that. Do need this. And let's grab out the manual. Looks like it came with a bunch of stickers, too that you can put in your case or wherever you want to. Right, so close this guy up. And we're going to use this motherboard box as a base to do some of the build outside of the case. So just like that. Okay, uh, let's do the processor. So this processor doesn't come with a cooler. Um, the higher end from AMD and uh, and Intel CPUs haven't come with coolers for a while. They expect uh, once you buy a certain level processor that you're going to be putting in some better cooling than uh, than they would like to include for free in the box. Or you know, I guess it's not free since you're paying for it, but. But yeah, so this is like their standard box, and ordinarily, the if it came with a cooler, it would be uh, about that size. Okay. I believe one of those is how to install the CPU, but we're going to do that. Okay. All right, well, let's open up the ARM. So on an AM4 and earlier um, CPU from Intel, the, the, the socket, you pull the arm down a little bit and up. And that slides the uh, the socket a little bit to allow the um, the chip to go in. There we go. This came with a sticker too. So there's a little indentation where you're meant to grip it. 
It's a brand new CPU, so it shouldn't have any bent pins, but let's look anyway. I'm just going to put it on edge. I'm doing this for the camera so you all can see this. So what you do is you look for bent pins. You just look down the, um, the length of it. I guess that's the correct term. And then turn it and do the same thing. As long as there's no bent pins, you're good to go. Um, so there's a triangle on one corner that matches up with a triangle or some kind of a dot or indicator on the socket. But it's, it's also the opposite side from where the, um, the arm goes. So you just rotate it like that and put it on top. And it should just fall in like that. If you want to you can get some extra presses sometimes it doesn't fall in all the way so just some extra presses with like your fingernail is good and then you just lower the arm and it clicks in place and that's your CPU installed and next let's do the M.2 solid state drive which is going to go right here So this is, this is a little bit more of a solid state drive than I would usually pay for. Um, the, the, uh, the reason for the getting the Pro version as opposed to the 980 um, non-Pro is um, the PCI Express 4.0 speeds, which it can make a difference um, depending on what you're using your computer for. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference for what my client George, who wanted me to build this for him, will do. But for an extra 50 bucks, George was very adamant about me getting him really good stuff. So I bought him the pretty much the best, fastest, uh, most reliable, hopefully, you never can tell, um, solid state drive. And currently he has a, a fourth generation Intel processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and um, a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. So this is going to be a, a really nice big upgrade for him. So, yeah, so the uh, M.2 slot is right here. You just kind of set it in at a 30-degree angle and push. And then it will come down and um, connect to a little riser and be held in place with a screw down here. Uh, there's two in here. We just need one. All right, so we will get that kind of back in that bag. Okay, so the M.2 riser. I really wish they would leave these or just have them, you know, in the uh, in the motherboard just as default for like the main slot. Where is my little nut driver? I think I have too many tools over here. Okay, I'm not seeing my little nut driver. So I'm just going to reach in and do this by hand. Just get it started. And you, you probably do this before you put the solid state drive in. Right. And just finger tighten it down. So again, that's a 30 degree angle to the motherboard. You push it in. And get myself just a... Oh, that is a... That's a hex bit. I need a little standard Phillips. There we go. Okay, so you kind of hold it down, get your screw in place, and tighten it down. All right, next up, let's do the RAM. So this is two sticks, 32 gigabytes each, and these will go into the second and fourth slot from the processor. That's pretty much been the standard for a long time. Um, if you have two sticks of RAM, to put them in the second and the fourth to enable um, dual channel mode for your RAM. And dual channel kind of doubles the bandwidth, so you want to put it in to the correct slots in the motherboard to enable that. And you can check in your motherboard's manual to be sure. Let's see. I think thing came with a, with a DVD for installing drivers, which we are not going to use. Uh, but that'll come later. All right. 
so we're looking for the RAM placement. Four DIMMs. Usually it's at the beginning. Okay, here we go. So that's how to install the, the processor, which I already did. So memory uh, recommended spots. So for two sticks, you should put it in the second and fourth. And if you have one stick, which you shouldn't do hardly ever, you would put it in the fourth uh, slot. Ordinarily, I would put that in the second, but um, that's cool. Just do whatever your motherboard manual says. All right, let's see if we can get this thing open without too much trouble. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy. So, G, G skill. So, when you look at your RAM, you're looking to find a um, a notch in it that's slightly off center, which matches up with a bit of plastic on the um, on the RAM slots. So, you just put it in the guides and push down equally on both sides. I I wish they wouldn't do this. Have the uh, the heat sink um, stick up like that, it hurts. Okay, and same thing. In the guides and down. And this also came with a sticker. Alright. I guess let's do the cooler. And it's a big boy. This is, I think, one of the largest uh, air coolers you can get. Brutal Pizza. How you doing? Um, love how you don't how people don't don't uh, care about optical disk drives anymore. Um, yeah. So George actually asked me about that, and I told him basically no. The vast majority of good cases nowadays don't have a spot for um, for a DVD drive or a Blu-ray drive or whatever, like a five and a quarter inch drive. And I told him we'd get him a um, USB uh, external drive if he really wants one. And he was like, okay. That's a big fan. Uh, here's the main cooler. Let's see. So we got fan, big cooler in here, and the manual for this thing should be in this box along with all the hardware. Okay, so we're looking for AMD. It's got a separate one for the Intel stuff. All right, AMD. Required parts. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Looks like fan speed reducers, thermal compound, and a clip for um, one of the, uh, the fans. Comes with a, um, a Phillips head kind of screwdriver that's specifically like a, a good length for it to go through. Some various stuff. Let's see what all is in here. All right, some little risers and screws. A back plate. So this back plate is going to be for Intel stuff, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, LGA. So we don't need that. I'm pretty sure this stuff is for Intel as well, although possibly not. Gray spacers. These are blue. All right. So that we don't need. That we don't need. There's some gray spacers. And it says we need two of these and some long screws. It says. Oh, there's the long screws. So there's two long screws there. We need the gray ones. Four long screws. We need the gray ones. 
The white ones are for older uh, AMD stuff. And then the stock back plate. Okay, so we need that stuff right there. The rest of this should be for Intel and uh, older AMD stuff. Okay, so it says to take off the um, the included uh, retention mechanism. Oh, come on. There we go. You bought a Fractal R5, which has two um, five and a quarter inch bays. Cool. All right, I'll have to look into that one. Um, if George had said no, I want one in the case, I would have had to go on searching. So I'll look at the Fractal next time I have someone that's very insistent about um, having an optical disk drive in the computer, although that's not very likely. Most people are fine with the uh, with the suggestion of just having an external one. All right, so we took that off. The okay, <laughs> the um, the back plate is just it's not connected. I don't know if y'all can see this, but if I lift this up, um, these four bits right here are just loose. So I'm not going to lift that up. All right, so we have that. We have that. So please first choose the correct plastic spacers. So AMD. So we definitely need to get out these four gray boys. So four gray spacers and four long screws. Right there. Don't roll. Don't roll. Don't need to be picking things up. All right. So extra. Okay. So we've got the right spacers. Yes. Next up. So on these bars, there's a spot for AM4 versus AM3 and AM2 and FM1 and FM2. Really old um, AMD. I can't imagine putting this cooler on a uh, an FM1 or an FM2 CPU. They're they're just they're really low end in comparison. So they're marked three and four for AMD um, or AM3 versus AM4. All right, so we got that. So then we set our spacers on top of the bits that are sticking through from the back plate. The bars are meant to kind of concave in, I guess. Set those on top. And then we're going through the holes. The outside one is three, the inside is four. So let's just stick those two through. And then hopefully we should just be able to turn. Yes. Okay. So same thing with the second one. Concave on the inside. Go through the holes marked four. And screw them in. Okay, and then it says to screw them down with a screwdriver, which we will do. Getting them most of the way down and then tight. I think if you want to get your hands on one of these um, powered screwdrivers like this one, I like this one a lot. Hitachi doesn't make it anymore. Uh, there's a link, I'm pretty sure, in the description of the uh, the stream where you can uh, get one of these for 60 or 70 bucks on Amazon. So that's in. Good to go. Um, okay, so it makes sure you put in the curved side uh, toward uh, or the inward. Applying thermal paste, it says put a dot right in the middle. That's what I usually do. Right 
thermal paste is in here. I like this. It lets you rip the bag open without destroying the bag. So, thermal paste. Let's see. So we'll just put a pea-sized amount right in the middle. Oh, <laughs> it like curved around. That was so weird. Oh, wow. That is, that is strange. Ordinarily, it kind of <laughs> thermal compound just goes straight on. That kind of curled and uh, touched the edge. Weird. That should be a good amount. All right. Turn the page over. What's next? Get the hits, the heat sink out. The big boy. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So this is gonna kind of open up on me. Right. Like multiple layers. Okay, a middle piece there, and there we go. All right, so both sides are essentially the same. Um, the fan on the middle, on the middle part, should be blowing this way. Um, I don't see any, any indication, but I have to take this out in order to put the cooler on anyway, because this fan is kind of in the way of the screws right here. So that's got to come out. And this is just grabbing it by this little clip, pulling it aside, and then should come up and out. And the other fan is around here somewhere. Um, it's got a cover over the uh, the plate. Let's see, should we go ahead and disconnect? Yes. Okay, so we'll take that off. So this will just sit right down on top. And I'm kind of eyeballing it to get the screw here um, close to this little bolt shaft. I don't know. So approximately on top, and then I will a screwdriver. to try and get them started. Okay, so that's down. That's down. Okay. Oh, and it came it came with this screwdriver here. So this is meant to go down like this, and then you turn it. I prefer using actual screwdrivers. And what I do, so I got them both started. So in order to make sure it goes down evenly, um, I'm going to give it a, an equal number of turns per side. So one, two, three, four, five. Switch. One, two, three, four, five. You just go back and forth like that, counting the turns until it's all the way down. That's getting close. All right, that's tight. Tight. And I like this. Uh, look, look at the uh, the cooler here. So it's got room. There's uh, there's a cutout here of, of the heat sink to allow for very high RAM. So you could have some RAM that's an inch taller than this, which would be ridiculous, and it would still fit. So great uh, RAM compatibility. Right. Uh, I think we're ready to put the fans in. Yeah. All right. So I'm not sure. I I think I've used this cooler before. I know I've used the um, an earlier version of it. Okay. So here's here's our second fan. The, the one I have in my diagnostic computer, which is down here on the floor, um, if I remember right, one of the fans was bigger than the other, and it was meant to have the smaller one in the middle here, where the larger was on the on the side, I think. I think that's right. Let's see. Is that N1, H1 paste? You say that's some of the best out here? Ah, uh, let's see. NTH1. 
is what I'm reading on here. I imagine it's very good though. Okay, let's see if these fans are different sizes. Nope, same size. Okay, so let's get the center one on first. Um, let me see if I can look on here and find a... Yeah, so direction of airflow. Um, it'll have... Uh, most fans will have a uh, an arrow pointing in the direction of airflow. So we want it to flow to the back of the case. So let's get fan in here. Take it all the way down. And you kind of grip this clip and take it and it grips onto the cooler. And these these fins are very sharp, just the fins of the cooler. So when you're doing this, be very careful. Um, you don't want to end up cutting yourself on them, which is very possible. The last time I built a computer, I got a couple of cuts here and here. And that was after, I, I, I think I, I put the cooler on, on stream live. Now, after I said that, um, I noticed I was cut a couple of times. It does not take much pressure. All right, and the clips, metal clips, the other two are in here. Now let's go ahead and take this out so I can read what these are. Okay, we'll do the clips first. Untangle. Okay, so fans going this way, and we'll put the clips here and here and that should hopefully hold together while I'm doing this through there and through there I'm just kind of get it above the ram So it's going to be sticking up quite a bit because of the height of the RAM. Uh, the other way we could do this is put the fan on the other side. And would that be any better? I think that would be a little bit better. Yeah, so it would be it would be lower profile going this way. So let's move these around so we can put it on the other way. So we'll move them to... Oh, come on. Here... Here, and same thing over here. Get them out, turn around through there, and oh, come on, don't be that way. Okay, so like that, and did I do that incorrect? Yeah, I put those on incorrect. Let's try that again. David Mogali, hello Michael, it's nice to see you doing today's build. Oh yeah. Thanks for being here, David. Okay, so I need to make this so it's like that. I'm having to think backwards here. <laughs> I'm not doing a good job. So it would be, would it have to come from this side? Is that the deal? And come over. Let's see if we can get them through there. Nope, that won't work either. No. So it has to be this side. Hmm. Let's just concentrate on one side. How would we have to put this in order to clip that on? We 
would it have to be? I'll get through there. You know you want to. There we go. Will that let it clip? No. Oh great, now they're caught. <sighs> Let's see. Stabbing myself with these stupid things. Okay, so it's got to be this way, right? So we'll do like that. But there's no way to clip it then. At least not a, a very elegantly way of clipping it. How would you clip that on in that case? I think this is the way I had it before and it didn't work, but let's try it anyway. So. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, come on. Whoa, okay. Will that do it? Putting the cooler on is probably one of the most difficult things to do when you come to think about it because it has all this extra hardware that you don't know if you need or not. There it goes. So that'll clip on. So it has to go. On the outside. Way up here. This part has to go on the inside. And then come around and clip, and then I can grab it and pull it over. That's on, and that's on. Okay. Well, that was a massive pain. All right, so I, I mentioned taking these out and explaining them to you. So uh, this would allow you to plug two fans, it's called a Y cable, two fans into one uh, spot on the motherboard. So this is just a Y cable. And this, what I'll do is I'll use it to plug into the CPU fan header, which is this guy right here. And it says so right there, CPU fan. And then the second one, the one here is CPU optional. But we can take... Our Y splitter, plug those in, and then plug one into the CPU fan. Once I get this in the case, I'll try and hide this uh, behind the back, hopefully. All right, we're doing pretty good. What else? Oh, these these guys here, these are usually fan reducers, fan speed reducers called a low noise adapter it just puts a resistance on the electricity going through to the fan makes it spin slower so and same thing so I could put these in the loop and it would slow the fan down uh, more than would be normal but instead what I'm going to do is use the um, the motherboards um, fan settings speed settings to uh, to reduce the speed and why would you reduce the speed of a fan because it'll make it quieter and the great thing about uh, doing it with the uh, the motherboard's um, settings is you can set a, a curve where when the CPU is not very hot, the fans spin very slowly. And then as the CPU gets hotter, if it gets hotter as you're doing things, they'll spin up and run faster. So the majority of the time, they don't make much noise. And these fans, even with their even if with them going full full speed, probably wouldn't hear them outside of the case anyway. Let's see. So Brutal Pizza says, I think it might be the further away holes. Yeah, you were right, <laughs> and I'm not sure if you said that before I figured it or not, or right, figured it out or not, um, or not. Um, and yeah, air coolers are the hardest part, They're just because of all this, all these extra things. Like most of the stuff we didn't, half of the stuff we didn't use, and these are just for either older AMD CPUs or Intel CPUs, 
and figuring that out is a bit of a pain. And then also the orientation of things, the orientation of the uh, the bars down there. Sometimes there's more bars to worry about. Um, on the Intel, I think there's there's two. No, never mind. It's not more bars. Uh, but that also depends on the cooler. Let's see, where are we? What what else can we plug in here? Oh, you know what? Let's build the computer completely outside of the case and make sure it works. So I'm going to open up the um. Well, actually, let's let's get the extra stuff out of the way. All right, cooler stuff. Let's set it down here. And yeah, oh, more cooler stuff. Extra stuff. So what I'm going to do is um, hook everything up outside of the case, make sure it works, then take it apart and put it inside the case. Um, and this is um, a really really good idea to do um, especially if you're a new builder you know, like first time builder or just not very experienced because before you go through the trouble of putting everything in the case and cable management and doing all that stuff it's good to know if it just works um, before you do all that and also the complexity of putting it in the case especially dealing with risers if you uh, if you you don't do the risers correctly, you can end up um, shorting out the board. And in that case, you have to then figure that out. But knowing that it works before you put it in the case is very helpful. Okay. Power supply manual. Power cable. And then it's got all of the, the cables kind of separate. So we, we only have to plug in what we need to make the computer work, which isn't a whole lot compared to what's in here. Um, so some power supply specific screws. They're just coarse threaded power supplies, um, power um, screws. Where are we at? Bro Pizza says we might be Better use both CPU and CPU opt to save on cable mess. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I think I'll do that just to, uh, like you said, save the mess. Let's go ahead and do that before I forget. So, unplug the Y splitter. This would be more useful if you didn't have a CPU optional on your motherboard, which most have. All right, so extra. And it doesn't matter which one is CPU versus CPU opt. And you can't, pl you can't plug these in wrong. Um, there's little plastic uh, things that stick out there that match up with a, a piece of plastic on the motherboard. So you can't put it on backwards you can if you really try you can do it <laughs> but uh, just pay attention to what you're doing and hooking as much as you can up outside of the case beforehand is a good idea so I just stuffed those extras just under this little unused space down here and they'll be fine all right let's pick out our our cables um, so this is PCI Express power to a six plus two pin so that gives you eight we need at least one of those, probably two, if not three. I'll have to look at the, uh, the the graphics card. This is SATA connections, which we don't have a SATA um, we don't have any SATA devices. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook one of these up in case he does want to put a SATA like a hard drive in here, which he might in the future. Um, there's another PCI Express. And another PCI Express. I don't think we'll need more than three. This is another PCI Express. I don't think there's four. These are Molex connectors. This is for really old hardware. And some, some cases and fans take that kind. Uh, another SATA. We don't need two. Here's our 24-pin power connector. Definitely need that and a CPU cable, which will go up here. Let's see, this thing only has one eight pin, so we don't need two. 
So if you have, um, so most motherboards will have an eight pin uh, CPU here. Sometimes there'll be another four, which in, ca in that case you would need another one of these and even an another eight. And I think the most I've seen on a motherboard is three eight pin, um, but that's very unusual. So there's another SATA and another CPU that we don't need. So these are the cables we really need to put on. So that's what I'll attach to the power supply. A little smoke. Yes, it is an actual cooler. So this is a um, D15, and I believe it's NHD15. Yeah, there's a box for it. Noctua NHD15 Chromax, the uh, the black edition. For ten bucks cheaper, you can get the standard um, Noctua coloring of things, which looks. I have a D14 down here in my uh, my diagnostic computer, which isn't on at the moment. But can y'all see that? So it's that color, um, and then like a brown for the for the fan blades, which I think is really ugly. And I think that's a pretty common opinion. Those are ugly. So paid a little bit extra for some some good looking stuff. And I just noticed this fan is a little bit high on this side. Let me pull it off and see if I can get it in better alignment. Okay, so down, back on. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Okay. So on modular power supplies, there'll be one side of the um, of the cable that's meant to go here. And the way you tell that, on a 24 pin, usually it's like this. So this part goes into the motherboard. This part goes into the power supply. So you. Uh, you really, I mean, you can't connect this side to the power supply. I, on older ones, you you could, and that was sometimes a problem. But just in and down. And if you go to take them out, you have to press down on this little piece of plastic here. And that's the that's the same for all power supply cables. All right. Eight pin CPU is next. And on here, you want to have the part that can be broken apart in case you only need four um, going to the motherboard and this side here goes to the, the CPU and they're labeled here um, so I'm going to plug it into CPU 1 and that second 8 pin PCI or 8 pin CPU would go here if we needed it which we don't in this build. Alright, this, well let's go ahead and do the SATA. SATA power is for usually um, SATA hard drives or SATA um, solid state drives they do make as well. Um, and I'm putting this in here just in case he wants to add a hard drive in the future. Um, so that's the part that goes to the drives. That goes to the power supply. And I'm just going to plug it into SATA 1. And then these next three are um, PCI Express power for the graphics card. Now the graphics card, uh, I don't know if this thing takes two or three eight pins. So I'm going to open it up and look. There's probably documentation that says, but, <coughs> excuse me, we need to open it up anyway. And this box is huge. It's like twice the, uh, the height probably needs to be. Alright. Extended warranty and something. Yeah, look how I mean just the size of this compared to uh, compared to the graphics card is a little little much. Oh this is nice. So it um, it comes with uh, a couple of dual six pin to eight pin um, adapters. So if you have an older power supply that, uh, that doesn't have enough 8-pin, uh, um, but does have double the 6 that you need, this would come in handy. Won't be, uh, won't be an issue with our build here, though. Okay. Go Ghetto Plays. Hi. Yes, I believe the black... I, I agree, the, the black looks way better. Brutal Pitch says, speaking of power supplies, did you hear about power consumption of upcoming 4000 series? Yes. 
Um, and the flagship, the flagship one apparently will need 800 watts just by itself. Yes, I have heard that. And it's very possible that we'll, we'll need power supply upgrades. Um, but, I mean, it depends how much, uh, how much you're going to spend on your graphics card. And they haven't released the pricing on the 4000 series. Um, I think AMD is going to have 7000 series for their stuff. But also lots of power required. So um, so it's two 8-pins. So we only need, we only need two 8-pin um, PCI Expresses. So that is extra. Where's my power supply box? Uh, I think I covered it up. There it is. Put that down in there. Okay. Get this thing hooked up. Damn expensive stuff is right. It will be expensive. There's no doubt about it. But with uh, mining going out of style, at least for a little bit, there shouldn't be too much scalping. We had a couple of years where it was just about impossible to find a graphics card for MS, uh, MSRP. So this I'm going to plug into VGA1. And the second one I'll plug into VGA2. And same thing. Oh, you know, wait a minute. I didn't notice. So there's a... You can have where you have one connector and then two eight pins on the same connector, and that's okay. Although it's kind of a, it's controversial. Some people have shown under certain cir circumstances that if you have two of, of these going to your graphics card from one cable, you will get lesser performance than if you had a separate cable going over and connecting. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this guy here to have a separate cable. And I'm wondering, do I need to have this double head on here? Is there another single um, 8 pin in the box? And I just didn't realize. So that's CPU. That's a double PCI Express. That is SATA. More SATA. Molex. And there it is. There's another single. So I'm going to remove the double header, and we'll put it in the box for future possible use. So I can have just a, two single 8 pins coming from the power supply, which can sometimes make a difference. And since I've got the cables, why not? Okay, so that's the 6 plus 2, and here's my 8 going to the power supply. So that's all the cables we need. And let's see. Take the graphics card. And one of the reasons I put this on top of a motherboard box is okay, there's a cover over that. One of the reasons I did this is because when I whenever I uh, put the graphics card in, the faceplate here, if it was not on the box, it would bump into the into the surface. So so let's see, can y'all see this? Go back up some, kind of align it over the slot, give it an extra look, and down. Okay. All right, let's just go around and hook it all up. So, 8 pin CPU, just kind of mash together. Get plugged in. 24 pin also goes to the motherboard on there. And, and then down. Cool. Let's see. Now we need two going to the graphics. So you just mash the, the two and the six together. And let's put it in this one. Oh, come on. Align right. Oh, it's being a 
pain. Okay, so you get them together. There we go. Same thing with this guy. And I put that one in first, the left one, because I am right-handed, and I think it'll be easier for me to get this thing in with that on the left, as opposed to the other way around. And easier does not mean easy. Maybe get a better look at this thing. All right, you're close. <laughs> the uh, the the clip from I think it's Happy Gilmore, the golfing movie, uh, where he, he gets down and yells at the ball, "Go to your home. Are you too good for your home?" Springs to mind. There we go. Got it. Ooh, that only took two minutes. All right, so power, we'll plug in. And we need a HDMI, which will go to this monitor in front of me. I'm going to switch its input to HDMI. We should have an HDMI connector on here. The majority will be DisplayPort. So that's just trash. Okay, in. So I'm just looking for video here, um, just to have video on that monitor. So main power switch, set to on, and then we jump the power button pins, which I'm reading. Power switch is these two right here. So together, I think it's on. So far, the fans haven't spun, but that's not unusual. Or the fans here, anyway. Well, that's not on. Okay, it did not turn on. Oh, it's it's just RGB here. Maybe I didn't press the right uh, the pins together enough. Let's try that again. There we go. Oop. Got something touching the fan. It's this one right here. It's rubbing against something. We haven't got video yet. Here comes video. There we go. Tough gaming. And it's telling me I got a new CPU installed. So, there you go. All right. Let's turn this thing off. <laughs> All right. Who's rubbing? Is it? Oh, there. the fan right here. I think it's meant to fit like that into this little guide and it was pushed back a little bit there we go so yeah I, it's the first time i've ever had that happen on a brand new fan it just came out of its guide a little bit well we got video so that's good that tells me the computer is basically functioning now we can go ahead and put it together all right main power off all right so when disconnecting power supply cables you have to push on a little plastic piece squeeze it as you pull up and that's true for every power connector HDMI out 24 pin squeezing and just wiggling pull up same here for the 8 pin so yeah that's that's what it looks like so these little scoops here clip on to a little bit of plastic and as you take it off you squeeze them to raise them up hopefully y'all can see that okay let's uh move this whole thing out of the way this thing's heavy um let's see you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna move the motherboard box along with it we're gonna set this right over here All right, let's uh, let's unbox the case. This was pretty torn up in, in shipping. I noticed this right here is kind of collapsed. 
and there's a cut here, but most likely the case is okay. They usually pack it in a bunch of foam. So instead of whenever you're taking a case out, kind of gripping here and pulling up, which brings the uh, the box with it, if you fold the, uh, the sides under and turn it upside down, then you can lift the case off or lift the big box off. Sorry, that gets you access to the case. Well, we've been online for almost an hour. So Brutal Pizza, you uh, you like having optical disk drives to uh, rip CDs and Blu-rays. That's cool. Uh, so captive screws holding on this side, and I'm thinking it probably just uh, it comes off. Okay, so to put it back in, these go in here and you kind of push it. It doesn't slide, it just comes right off. Probably something similar with the other side. Someone's at my front door. I'll be right back. So that's somebody dropping off a computer. Um, let's see, it's a big old desktop computer, gaming computer. And what he told me is that he tried to turn on Secure Boot in the BIOS and then lost video. So I'm gonna look at that in a little bit. Okay, did I miss anything, chat?
Okay. Lil Smoke says uh, likes the uh, the black theme. Okay. I was taking off the the case side and captive screws, and then push out. Most cases have a little spot where they stick the uh, the hardware that come with it. So this is in a three and a half inch uh, hard drive bay. Okay. So if my client does use a uh, a hard drive, this is where we would put it. And there's a piece of foam in here, just between the base. And the hard drive bay. Okay. Looks like we got some decent um, cable management options. So USB 3.0, USB 3.2, audio, power switch, and power LED. Okay. And we're just going to put these back where they were for now. Just kind of up in there. Okay, see what they they gave us for screws and whatnot. Okay, bunch of twist ties, which I don't use. And we've got coarse screws, extra risers. Can you all see what I'm doing? Yeah, okay. Uh, fan screws some washers, a couple of extra captive um, thumb screws, and some really tiny um, finely threaded screws. Okay, so probably won't need those or these. No, we do need these. We're adding fans. Washers, and extras. Okay, let's put away some of the extra stuff that I don't think we're going to be needing. I don't think we'll need those or the washers or the tiny screws. So we've got fan screws, risers, and coarse threaded screws. Alright, let's lay this thing down. So it comes with uh, with two fans, one in the back, one in the front. I'm going to be adding three extra fans. What I'll do is I'll move this fan up at the top, put my three added fans in the front, just so they all match. And let's see. How do you take this off? Well, I'll, I'll do that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the motherboard in. Motherboard and just <laughs> most of the other stuff, too. So the fan has a cable I'm just stuffing up here at the top. We need to put in the IO shield. Black man 0604. Um, you missed quite a bit. We did uh, the, the majority of uh, the component installs onto the motherboard, um, but we're building a computer. So this is meant to fit in here, and it matches up. Let's see. with the I.O. on the motherboard. So you basically just hold it up so you get it in the right orientation. That's the correct orientation. So you kind of push it into the corner. Do the other side. And it should pop like that to go in. And you look at it from the outside and yeah, that's in. Okay, risers. Looks like we got some decent riser locations. It should match up with this motherboard. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, the graphics card because we can't put it in there with the graphics card. It will not fit. I'm reaching with a screw or a, a screwdriver down here to press the ejection button which then allows the graphics card to come up. So this is it right here. Whenever you put it in, it does like that. And then when you want to take it out, you have to push it down. Graphics card we will set right now. 
down here. Okay, so let's look. Let's look at the motherboard. So we've got three holes along the top, which match up with. Can y'all see this? Yeah, that riser, that riser, and that riser. One, two, three. One, two, three. Looks good. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, so we don't have to make any changes to the risers, which is good. So I'm going to grip this thing by the cooler, set her down in, get it approximately right, and slide it towards the back. There we go. And that fit. And this case has one of the risers that kind of pokes through this hole, so it kind of locks it in place. And I'm looking through the holes in the motherboard, and it matches up perfectly with the risers. The other thing I can do is lift this thing up and just verify that the, the connectors are showing through properly. Yeah, we're good. Okay, and since it only came with coarse threaded screws that means that the risers take coarse threaded screws and we need how many eight I think because there's nine risers but this one has a little thing that pokes through there's no way no way to put a screw in wow this is really tough not want to tear. Yeah, it doesn't even want to cut. Good lord. Okay. Open that up. And we need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay. Screwdriver. Blackman says that's overkill for the CPU, but it'll be. I think you meant to write quiet. Are you talking about the uh, the, oh, the the coolers overkill? If so, you are correct. It is probably about fifty dollars more than we really needed to spend, but George wants the best. George is the client I'm building this for, and he um, he uses uh, AutoCAD. Um, he like um, designs. Uh, oh, what are they called? Um, outdoor areas. I guess I can put it that way. Uh oh, we dropped a screw. You come here. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So this this um, this riser is. Out of alignment a little bit. I'm pushing the case, or I'm I'm, I'm pushing the uh, the motherboard back a little bit, and then it should go in. Whenever you're putting the screws in, if you feel resistance, look at the screw and make sure you're not uh, cross-threading it. Yeah, so that does not feel right. I'm gonna put this screw down here, and the motherboard needs to go back a little bit. Yeah, this this screw does not feel like it wants to go in. I'm gonna put it in timeout and grab another one. CPU processor graphics card. I talked to George a lot about graphics card, and he was like, "Get me the best one. Get me the best one. Get me the best one." And then I showed him the prices for the quote unquote best one, and we decided on this one. It's it's massively faster than what he's got right now um, at the moment it's a tiny little single fan um, I want to say it's from the 700 series from AMD or not AMD sorry uh, Nvidia okay that's um let me try this screw in another riser and see if it goes better 
Yep, it went better. For some reason, that screw did not like that riser. All right, so now I just got the three along the top. So it would be impossible to put the fan on top. I'm going to put a fan. Oh, shit, you're right. I should have put the fan on top here. I think I can still do it. There's enough space for it to go in there. And let me see. This thing. Yeah, put the fan right through there and then screw it in. It'll be okay. I should have done that before, though. That's a good point. Uh, let's see. Lay this thing back down. What will be difficult to do is get the uh, the A pin CPU down in there. That is a tight fit. It's gonna be gonna be difficult. What you can do to mitigate that is um, put the uh, put the fan or the, the cable up through one of these corners, plug it into the motherboard, and then as you're putting the motherboard in, uh, feed the uh, the cable through. But we're already past that point. And this is going to be difficult, too, because this is not too bad, but cooler is so big. Oh, it's not that bad. Right through there. So, so far, I haven't tightened down any of the screws holding the motherboard in. I'll do that at the, at the very end. Okay, that one's going. All right, so I'll just tighten them down. And these screws, you don't have to tighten down super tight. Just snug them down. Another thing to consider when building your computer is making sure that the, the cooler you have will fit in the case. If I put this on an edge, you all can see that the this fan right here is within probably half of an inch from being a little bit too high up. Okay. What next? I guess we can go ahead and do the fans. So I want to move this fan to the top. Okay, that's just held in with little clip thingies. It pulled right off. And then we have a air filter. There's my fan. Yeah. Turn the power up on this thing right now. It's on the the minimum torque. Let's turn it up to 21. There we go. So that's that's for holding in fans. In the cases that kind of screw, and I've got a a lot of them that came with the case. So this fan, we want to make so that uh, it sends hot air toward the top of the case. So um, this arrow right here, I think y'all can probably make out, is the direction of airflow. So I'm going to turn it like this so that the cable's on the bottom so I can route it down through the back. And we'll stick this down here. Stand the case up. And there's my holes. Okay. I'm getting two started on opposite corners, just with my fingers. And we'll tighten down this one. Tight. All right, 
That's good. So I can slide this a little bit towards the back or the front, but I'm kind of liking like that. Let's go ahead and get the other two in. Fan screws are the hardest ones to screw in, especially on a new fan. Yeah, because what this does is it uh, it bites into the plastic. There are no threads in the fans until you bite into them with a fan screw, just like that. And then its cable will plug into one of the fan headers. Um, and I'll just put it through the back here. I'll deal with that in a bit. All right, three more fans. Where is my box of fans? What a triple pack. Hmm. What did I do with the box of fans? There it is. These are from a brand called Up Here, which I've never heard of. But they have good reviews, and they were super cheap, and they should last a long time. Oh, nice. They come with a, uh, a fan um, splitter. Oops, something fell. All right, three fans. Came with some screws and more screws. So we have plenty of fan screws. All of these came with the uh, with the case, and we're going to need 12 of them, four per fan, three fans, 12. There we go. Actually, got that to come off. So the idea behind this is not all motherboards have lots of fan headers on them. So you would plug this into the motherboard, and then plug your three fans in here, and they would get their their power and their speed settings through all one cable. Same deal. We're looking for blowing direction, which this does not have arrows. Okay. But if you look at the fan, so it's it's going to turn that way, which means we want to air bring in for air from from the uh, from the front. So that sweep will make it go that way. So from the inside. out of the way keyboard oh I pressed something I pressed the button on the keyboard there we go I think now it would be impossible to put the CPU power to the motherboard I mentioned that earlier um, and that's true so and I didn't connect it yet I should have done that way <laughs> I should have done that before I put the fan in, no doubt. That's going to be damn near impossible. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. I guess we'll take the fan out. Let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, what did I do with the with the power, power supply? Here we go. So I need the CPU cable. And let's take that fan back out. Opposite corners, and then when that one comes out, it'll just be floppy. Good news is these screws will go in much easier because they've already got their threads made. Just the CPU screws. All right, that together. 
Okay, let's go ahead and get this in there. So this is the part that goes to the to the motherboard. I'm going to stick it through this upper corner. And set this down. Set the case back down. Don't crush the fan. Actually, would that be easier to do? Yes, it would be. Okay. So I have to get this down there. Past the cooler. And plugged in. Okay, I'm going to take this fan off. Okay, Got the fan out of the way. And that should give me a little bit more room to deal with this. And I'm not likely to get these to be mashed together and put in at the same time. So I'm going to do one and then the other. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. One's in. But then I have to turn the second one. Y'all are probably looking at the top of the case. Turn it. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes, it would have been much easier if I did this before I put the motherboard in the case. If I already had it connected. It's close. It's real close. So especially if you have a huge beefy cooler and a modular power supply, do that before you put it in the case. Okay, that's both in. I think. I'm just reaching in to see if they'll go anymore. No, they're down. Okay, cool. So this will come down and connect to the power supply. But now we can put that fan back. Uh, not that one. This one. So yeah, if you look at it, there's a spot with a an arrow telling you the direction. Right back in there. <laughs> what's that? Uh, what's that? You put a little, uh, little smoke. I can't make out what it is. Okay, there's one. Opposite corner. Two. Okay, I'm going to tighten it down. So that will drag any excess heat out the top. All right, and the front fans. And these don't have arrows on them, unfortunately. But if they spin that way, it will scoop the air that way. So I will put this guy with this cable on the inside, approximately right there. Oh, wait a minute. No, I need to put this guy from the inside. Like that. So these are 120 millimeter fans. Uh, looks like this case can take uh, 
some some larger ones um, if you wanted to. So this is going to feed. This one right here will mostly feed air down below where you would have a hard drive. So this is uh, this is a good spot for a fan. And the other two will just bring cool air in from the front in general. Thumbs up emoji. Okay, I can see it now. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to, I shouldn't tighten these down yet because I need to account for the others going in on top. So I want to make it so that it's a little bit loose so I can slide them before I can get them all, before I get them all in. Oh, come on. I kind of got cockeyed. Oh, you know what? I put that screw in the wrong place. I put it on the outside one. Are you all screaming that in the chat? Nobody said anything? Okay, cool. All right, so this needs to be kind of rotated. And then... Next one in on top. So yeah, it'll go approximately like that. <laughs> Why would I do that? Because I wasn't thinking clearly. Down, of course. Okay, make it slidey. Okay, so like that. And in. Will you sit up there? Cool. Uh, angle the camera up a little bit. Okay, so they're all in, and they can be slid around a little bit. And that bottom one, I'm going to make it as low as it'll go, so when he does get hard drives, if he gets hard drives, they'll be cool. So I'll just tighten that in there at the bottom. guys I guess don't guess they really matter where they go I'll take that one to the top just because it kind of matches up with the outside bit here tighten them down and this guy can just kind of sit in the middle in place. The top on and then the bottom. Okay, good. All right, so these fan cables So I can take them through here and there, and then that bottom's already down there. Okay, we'll deal with that in a little bit. And then that extra fan at the top.
Hmm. All right, where are we at? Oh, yeah, it's a nice screwdriver. I like it very, very much. If you check the description of the uh, of the um, the stream here, you should find a link to one on Amazon. It's not the same brand, but it's it's essentially the same model. Screws. Uh, let's deal with the the cables and get the power supply in. All right, power supply. How does it want to go in in this case? Will it come from the outside in? No. So most cases have a spot on the bottom for air intake down here, and you want to aim your uh, your fan at it. So fan towards the bottom is usually what you want. But I do need to go ahead and plug in this 8-pin uh, CPU cable. Just like that. And power supply will go to the inside. And we'll have its cables just out over here. Um, the power supply came with four, four screws. Did I leave them over here somewhere? There they are. So these are just coarse threaded screws. They're not special or anything, but they did come with the power supply, so we'll use them. Supply approximately the right spot. Okay, there's one. I'm not tightening them down so I can move the power supply around a little bit. Three. Four. Let's tighten down. Nope. Oh, that was not a, a screw hole. That was just a, a part of the mesh. The screw hole is here. There we go. So that's the 8 pin. We got a 16, I'm sorry, not a 16, a uh, 8 pin, which will come up from the bottom. For the graphics card, there's another 8 pin. Going to the same spot. The 24 needs to come up to here, so I will get that stuck through there. And this is premature, but we can kind of tie it down like that. built-in tie and do the same thing to this one but I'm gonna hold off on that so I'll just kind of get it out of the way the power for the hard drives SATA power I'm just gonna stick down in there for in case they do want to put in a hard drive and that's it um, it's very minimal cabling oh you know what Let's go ahead and run a SATA cable. What did I do with the motherboard box? Here it is. The motherboard box has two SATA cables that came with it. And we'll go ahead and get it. I'll go ahead and run two of them just in case he gets two hard drives. 
So one is straight on both ends and one is bent, and this is meant to go to a drive. So I will stick this through here, and you can go ahead and connect it to the motherboard. I don't know if you can see this, I guess so. So I'm just going to plug one in here and one in here. And just about all modern, modern motherboards, the SATA uh, controllers for them are all run through the chipset. There's there's not like any differences in them. They're numbered, but the numbering doesn't really matter. It's like zero through five if you have six of them. And then this will just kind of... set down here in the bottom. Just push down in there. Okay, but the other cable is coming from the front. We probably do need to disconnect some of this. This is USB 3.0 and generally they're right here. Yep, right there. So this will just come through and get plugged into the motherboard. It's right next to where the 24 pin goes. We've got a reset, power LED, and power switch. Okay, and this is HD audio, I think. Yeah, audio. This comes through over this way, and The audio connector on most motherboards is down here at the bottom left of the motherboard, so I'll just stick that through there. Just sworn, yeah, there it is. USB 3.2 and some revision bullshit, but not all motherboards have these connectors, though. This one may not. It does not. And that was an oversight for me, not matching up the, uh, the case on the motherboard. So at the front, that USB-C is not going to work. So that's just going to be an extra cable at the bottom. And then these three will come up through the bottom here. Oh, come on. Get them all together. Get them and pull them through. Oh, come here. These are so fiddly. All right, let's connect everything up on the front side. Okay, audio. You're looking for one. It's usually labeled AAFP on the motherboard, and it's missing one pin which matches up with a place where there's no place for a pin to go. So you just kind of rotate it, get it aligned, and push. And let's see. Nothing else to plug in down here, I don't think. Yeah, we don't have any regular USB. There's a place to plug in a chassis fan and another chassis fan, which we might just... But these guys, let's move our, the extra cables out of the way, plug in on these eight, eight pins here. And if I look on the motherboard, a hard drive LED is the bottom left too, which I don't think we have a hard drive LED. The only LED we have is for power. And power LED is the top two pins. And on the LEDs, you have to match up the negative and the positive. So the right here on the on the connector, it's labeled power, LED, power LED plus, power LED minus. So that's positive and negative. And the positive needs to go to the left of the motherboard. So I'm going to kind of stick those two together, rotate it, and plug it into those top two, just like that. All right, and we've got power switch and reset switch. Reset switch goes at the bottom. 
and the alignment on this doesn't matter. There's not a positive and negative. It goes to the bottom, and the power switch goes to the top. There you go. If you look in your manual, it'll tell you. It'll give you a, a good view of them. There it is, panel. So there they are. So hard drive LED we put at the bottom left, reset we put at the bottom right, and power switch at the top right, two pins. No, I'm sorry, we didn't have hard drive LED, we had power LED. So the power LED is the top um, two leftmost pins. Cool. All right. Um, so we still have to deal with USB 3.0, and this, it has a little notch, or not a little notch, it has a little jut out of plastic there, which matches up with a notch on the connector on the motherboard. So you can't put it in backwards, or at least you can't put it in backwards easily. And it just kind of clicks in there, and then the 24 pin is right here as well. And this part right here clips onto a bit of plastic on the connector. So you can't put it in backwards, at least not easily. If you try hard enough, you can put it anything in wrong. So that, you just want to push until it stops going. It's not really... It doesn't want to go anymore, but I can tell it's not on because I can feel a gap in the plastic. Let's see. Get some leverage on this thing. All right. I can see through the grate here that the top just went in. The bottom's close. There we go. That took the top out a little bit. All right, and that's in. And I'm just feeling the uh, the plastic on the sides, and there's no gap. All right. So what we have left is hooking up the fans and putting in the um, <clears throat> the graphics card. Let's go ahead and deal with the fans. Oh man, I almost threw up there. That would have been so awesomely bad. Can you imagine that on a live stream? How that would go viral? I'm basically just taking the uh, the cables for the fans loose and feed a, try and find a way to feed them toward the back. And this bottom fan, its cable should just be down here. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a we've got a four-way splitter. Uh, let's see. There's a fan cable. I think that's for the top one. And where's the bottom one? Oop, that's not the top one. That's the, the bottom one. Bring that down. Top one through. So we got. One, two, three. So we'll plug these in to our fan splitter. That's backwards. Or you can see this a little bit better. So the uh, the little not um, the notches that are on one side match up with plastic. Right, just like that. And then this we need to plug into the to the motherboard. There's a couple of spots to plug this in up at the very bottom. So I'm gonna stick this up and through. And let's see. There's one right there. I don't know if y'all can see this. But just turning it in the right orientation and sticking it on. Just like that. I think we still have the top fan needs to be plugged in. 
Uh, there's not any more fan headers at the top that I can see. Let's look at the motherboard manual. Find the fan location. Sorry, I haven't looked at chat in forever. So Cluster Game says this case is nice, but prefer the ones with all-in-one GPU upgrades and PCU space. Um, you could put an all-in-one in here. Um, you could put a 240 across the top. You might be able to get a 360. No, never mind. You can't. The um, the 5000 version of this, I think you could put a, a three, uh, 360 uh, radiator um, in the front, maybe even on the top. Um as far as GPU goes, this looks like you can put a vertical mount uh, GPU. There's there's spots right here, yeah, where you could take that off, and more than likely they sell an adapter where you could vertically mount your GPU. All right, let's look up fan headers in the manual. Manual seems to be laid out a little bit different than I usually see them. Okay. So we got the two CPU fan uh, headers at the top. Okay, there's two more here, just above where the graphics card goes in. Right up in there, that's kind of... I could probably plug it in there. But I'd prefer to take it down around the back and plug it in somewhere else. Let's see what else we got. So those two are kind of covered up in a pain. And then down at the bottom, we've got one more at the bottom we can use. Let me see if this cable is long enough to go from the top around the back and come up through the bottom. Is this better than the Corsair 220T? I don't know. I don't think I've heard of the 220T. And better is kind of subjective. All right, so it looks like it's long enough. So it's got to go through through the back, down the back of the motherboard, come up and plug in down here. I think we can do that. So let's put this towards the back of the case. Pull it through as much as it'll go. Come down here, and we want to go up through this section, I believe. Oh, come here. It's close. I got it. And then we can turn it to plug in right here. Cool. Oh, that's ugly. I shouldn't have done that. So I should have taken these two cables and put them through here. All right, let's redo the fans a little bit. As, as much as possible, hide cables. Okay. Pull the fans through. We'll put them, let's see, so that's the, that's this one. We'll put them through a hole down here. And there's one. That should look much cleaner. Yep, there you go. Let's plug them back in to the splitter. Right. I think that's everything but the graphics card. Just the graphics card. Let's lay this thing down. 
hopefully make it easier on ourselves. Graphics card will go right here, so we need to remove a couple of uh, slot covers. So we want this one and this one. I think it's a two-slot two cooler. Oh, I thought that it unscrewed, but it did not. There we go. One, two. And graphics card. What did I do with it? There it is. Yeah, it's a two-slot cooler. It's it's really three because it goes down so much further. Okay. So the faceplate needs to go to the left of the motherboard's edge, but not on the outside. Not on the outside of the case. So you kind of put it over the slot. It's difficult to see. Just get it approximate. See how it feels and push. Just like that. That's in. And we can put back these thumb screws. Hmm, that's cross-threading. Why you cross-thread? There it goes. So cluster gaming, you say it, it looks the same as inside as the, the 220T? And then Blackman0604 says, yes, it's better. I want to see this thing. They're called thumb screws, but sometimes you need a screwdriver to put them in. Those things did not want to didn't want to turn well. Okay, so reconnecting our eight pins. And six plus two. So it's a, a six pin and a two pin you stick together. The reason they're they don't come together, you know, permanently, is that some graphics cards only need six pins. So if you only need six, you take off the two and you plug in the six. Otherwise, you kind of jam them together and push. And same thing again. And then, okay. So this extra excess cable length, we can push through and down just to get it out of the way. But that's everything connected, unless I forgot something. So let's try and turn it on. So if you if you've joined us kind of recently, we already had the computer up and running out the, outside of the case. If you run back the stream to about maybe the 10 minute mark, took us about 10 or 15 minutes to get the computer up and running out of the case. Then the rest of this was putting it in the case, which takes a lot longer. Okay, so we got power going in, main power on. We're gonna need a keyboard and mouse to control this thing. So that's what I got here. One of these is keyboard and one is mouse. All right, both in. We need HDMI, which is going to this monitor in front of me. Plug it in. So with the main power switch on, we should be able to just press the power button. And it comes on. Okay. I may um, change the location of these power plugs so they're up here and they come across from the top. Because right now we're blocking the, uh, the LED on the graphics card. So that's just a rerouting of cables. But we got video. So we should be good to... Let's see, make some room to put the computer over here. 
all these extra screws and pieces and everything, I'm going to put in the motherboard box. Let's go ahead and do that. And I tell the client, you know, just hold on to the motherboard box because it's got all the extra stuff in it you might need in the future. Screws and covers and excess mounting hardware. And I'll put the, uh, the hardware that came with the cooler in here as well, along with any adapters or just extra stuff. We will put back in here. That way the client just has to keep the motherboard box and the rest of it can be basically discarded after the return period's over. I always tell people to keep boxes until the return period is over in case there's a problem. You can send it back to where you bought it from. All right, let's move this thing. Try not to bump the, the microphone. Oh, come here. All right. Is that enough? Don't have much space to work with. All right, I'm going to switch my uh, my cam mounted uh, or head mounted uh, camera, which is my phone, to a tripod. It's a Galaxy S22 phone, is what it is. Just standard telephone. Oh, relatively high end telephone, but okay. So I'll just stick this a tripod and aim that at the screen okay and let's whoop I clicked on the wrong thing let's do that again all right need the webcam view and we'll stick it over here S22 is the highest you can get. That's true, but it is the uh, the plain S22, not the Plus and not the Ultra. So they, they do make slightly higher end stuff from Samsung at the moment. I went with uh, this this size because I didn't need a very large phone. Um, I don't have the largest hands in the world, and the smaller phones are easier for me to like reach stuff. Uh, where are we at? Okay. Uh, that's the wrong mouse, that's the right mouse, and this is the right keyboard. So we're doing F1 on the keyboard to get into the BIOS. That's a good view. Move that cable out of the way. You're going to spring back, aren't you? That's okay. All right. So I can hear the fans pretty, uh, pretty well if I stop them. So the fans in the front are making a good amount of noise, and I want to turn those down. I'm going to go to fan control, and I'm going to take each one and put it on silent. Oh, come on. It's difficult to click in the BIOS. You have to hold the, the mouse extremely still. If you, you have it moving as you click, it doesn't register. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning down all the fan curves to silent. On PWM already are they? Yes, good. PWM is what you want. It gives you better control. So we can exit out of that, and they're still making a, a good amount of noise. I'm going to press F10 to save and exit. So it should reboot. And the fans should calm down a bit. I'm pressing F2 and delete on the keyboard to get back in. Okay, so they're actually still kind of uh, still kind of loud, but I'm going to deal with that later because I almost certainly need to update the BIOS on this thing too. Um, the, the one it has right now is 1804 for this motherboard, and I'm not uh, I'm not sure if that's the most recent. If anyone in chat wants to look that up for me, please do. Let me know if I do need to do an upgrade on the CPU or on the uh, the motherboard's BIOS. Okay, so Blackman says he's going to get the S21 FE. That's cool. That's that's a good uh, good phone. And Felix says it's a bad thing they removed the memory card. Yes, that is a big bummer. Um, you used to be able to add a SD card, micro SD card for extra storage, and they stopped doing that.
what is this American Megatrends thing? My computer doesn't have to have it. Maybe it's because it's from a different country. American Megatrends is one of the BIOS manufacturers. Um, there's a few of them, um, and I don't know why they – they were probably founded in, in America somewhere, um, north or south, I don't know, central, who knows. Um, but uh, they, that's just their name. Um, okay, so let's F10 and OK, and I need an installer for Windows 10. So Windows 10 is – the installer is on this USB flash drive. I'm just going to plug it into the top here of the case. So we'll probably on the screen get an error message because it doesn't have an operating system to boot to. I'm just plugging this thing wrong. Oh, it just went back to the BIOS. Okay, so if we give it a copy of Windows, and I'm just going to do Control-Delete for a reboot, it should see it on that flash drive and start the install process for Windows 10. And he um, he's sticking with Windows 10, not Windows 11. He's not a gamer, and he's got some older software that... Um, He's not sure we'll work with Windows 11. I'm not sure either. Um, Windows 10 is what we're going with for now. Okay, we should start getting the spinning dots here. And I'm going to change my phone to normal um, focus. And I'm going to tap the screen, which hopefully will give us a good... A good focus. Okay. Um, hang on a second. Let me do something with my phone. do its thing. Oh, wait a minute. I got a, I got a text. Well, crap. I have to go. Um, let's see what time is it? Okay, yeah, they just sent this. I got to go in about 15 minutes, but let's see if we can get it uh, to the desktop in that time. Okay, so back to the camera. Okay. Back to the tripod. Okay. Uh, next. Install now. Hey Google, set an alarm for 15 minutes. Got it. Your alarm set for today at 1.39 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to activate Windows screen. Um, he wants Windows uh, 10 Pro. And I explained to him that he would get no advantage from Windows 10 Pro paying the extra fee. He doesn't care. He wants Pro because he's a professional. And it, 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 unless you need um, connection to a, a domain controller or uh, encryption, you don't need Pro. You can save your money. Um, but I'm going to say I don't have a product key. I'm going to put it as product key in later. And if you say you don't have it, you can then choose your copy of Windows or the edition of Windows you want. Defaults to Windows 10 Home. I'm going to put it on Windows 10 Pro. And it will install Windows 10 Pro. After a little bit, after a couple of reboots, maybe of, uh, in Windows, it will start asking for, for the 25-digit key. So accepting license terms. And next, custom. That sees our one terabyte um, solid state drive. I'm just going to click next. And it will create the partitions it needs to. Blackman0604, the new version of BIOS is... 18 or sorry 2803 okay so yeah we'll we'll definitely get the um get the bios update before we get done but that will be uh, on a separate stream all right we're at 15 percent 16 17 this counting right here up to the percentage it, it depends mostly on the drive you're copying to which in this case is a solid state drive but it's being limited by the speed of the flash drive that i have i need to uh, that's a really old flash drive. I need to get a get a new one with a copy of Windows 10 on it and start using it. Save some time doing these um, doing these installs. A little smoke says the professional. Yes, he is the professional.
So Cluster Gaming says Cooler Master TD500 Mesh is better to build in. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I've, I've had a few um, Cooler Master um, coolers and cases over the years. They make good stuff. It is USB 3.0, um, but that really doesn't matter. Um, one of the things that's difficult um, to understand, and um, I find people that are even in the computer industry don't don't understand this, just because the interface is a certain speed, that doesn't mean that the device will operate at that speed, because it's not just the interface. It's also the speed of reading and writing to the drive, be it a uh, hard drive, which is magnetic, or flash with... Um, like uh, the one here that I just plugged in, it's flash chips. But the speed is really determined, reading and writing speed is determined by the media. In this case, it's flash, uh, not the interface. You can, have, you can have flash chips that only write at uh, two megabytes per second on a USB you know, 3.2 interface. And the 3.2 interface will not give you a speed benefit. It has to be you know, speedy along the entire way. The chips, the controller, the interface, and then, of course, what you're copying, too, makes a big difference. Okay, so it's detecting devices. That's good. Looking like we're pretty close to... Uh, the next step. I think it reboots one more time here. I'm sticking my hand in the front of the case just to verify that I got the direction of the airflow correct on the fans, and I did. And it's going out the top, and I didn't even check the back. You know what? We I didn't uh, I didn't connect the the rear um, case fan, so I still have to do that. It is not spinning. Everything else is though. Okay, is it rebooting? You, I think. Where'd you go? Yep, it's rebooting. What about an external SSD installing Windows 10 from an external SSD? That could be faster. It could be. Um, I do have, see this right here, see that? So you put an NVMe SSD in there, an M.2 NVMe SSD, and it uh, connects to the computer with USB. So that could be faster. How much faster? I'm not sure. Although it would be worth a try. Okay, we are in the United States. US keyboard, no second keyboard. It says I've not connected to the internet, and I'm going to say I don't have internet, and yes, I'm sure. If you, uh, if you give your computer an internet connection at that point, it will insist that you uh, connect the user account to a Microsoft account, which I'm, I don't like doing, and I don't think George would appreciate it. So I'm just going to type in his first name, which is George. Did I spell that right? Or is it E before the O? It doesn't look right. Yeah, it's E before the O. There you go, that's George. Next. And I'm not going to put a password. He doesn't have a password on his current computer. Uh, privacy settings. I turn off everything with the exception of diagnostic data and location. And we'll say no to Cortana doing anything that we could have control over. That fan, that rear case fan I forgot to connect, I'm going to plug it in just above the graphics card, between the graphics card and the, uh, the cooler. There's a couple of right there. It would be difficult to get my fingers into, but I think I can do it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give it an internet connection, though. 
plug in Ethernet, Ethernet cable. Windows picked up that there's an armory crate available. With Asus motherboards, you almost always get the option to get the armory crate. Definitely say yes to that. Because what it does is it detects and downloads all the drivers that you need for your for your motherboard. Like networking and sound, you know, things like that. Alright, we're getting started on Edge because we need to get to a web browser. And the armory crate takes a while. You just have to be patient with it. But you can do other things. Complete setup. Continue without signing in. And then we will go... <laughs> a couple of services are running from the, uh, the armory crate. All right. Go to ninite.com. And this program or this website is awesome. Anything you see here, you can check. All these programs are free. I just want Chrome at this point. But you click Get Your Ninite and run the installer allow it to make changes yes and it will go get the programs you selected and install them for you wow we've been on for two hours and 12 minutes so i gotta leave in like seven minutes um maybe a little bit longer but we'll pick up this i'll pick up um, a separate stream after the fact all right, close, and then we should be able to find Chrome up in here. Right-click on it, pin it to taskbar so it's always there. And so the screen went black because Windows is, is detecting hardware, and it probably just loaded a driver for the graphics card. I'm going to right-click on Start and go to Device Manager. And... There's only one device it hasn't detected, a PCI encryption decryption controller. And that's most likely something to do with the chipset, which the, uh, the armory crate's going to find. Click on display adapters, and there it is, RTX 3070 Ti. So the one that Windows installed is, is usually a couple of months old. So if you're into gaming, you would want to go get the latest, uh, the latest driver from NVIDIA, which we'll go do. So www.nvidia, actually, you know, let's just do a search, NVIDIA drivers yeah there's the drivers download section all right product type is a rtx rtx series nope that's not right it's not a rtx quadro it is a geforce geforce 3000 series 3070 ti windows 11 game ready driver search download and download. There it goes. Let's see what the armory crates up to. It's still installing itself. How are we doing, chat? Yes, Chrome is better. Absolutely, a little smoke. Crucial has a new line of external SSDs that do 800 megabits per second. <laughs> yeah, 800 megabits per second going on to. Uh, uh, Gen 4 uh, PCI Express uh, NVMe drive would probably take about five seconds. And that's just a guess. Yes, if your motherboard uh, has uh, 3.2 Gen 2 of USB, true. And this motherboard doesn't, which is a bummer. I should have checked that before I bought it. I don't think it will affect him, though. He doesn't have any USB-C devices. If he really wants one, um, I could get him an add-on card that would have um, an interface like that. It would just go into one of the PCI Express slots at the bottom. All right. Uh, yeah, allow access. That's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, here comes the armory crate. So 
agree. Oh, come on. Do I have to? I have to scroll in order for it. Okay, and then I can say agree. Okay, I read it. I really did. Same thing again. I agree. We will skip wallpaper, cancel out of the user center, um, and the icons you want tools. And this will show us the drivers it wants to download. Not very much. So the uh, the missing driver, that uh, encryption decryption thing, that's most likely going to get solved by the AMD um, driver. But first, I'm going to go over to utilities and uncheck. You just click this top one and it unchecks those. If you don't do that, I'm pretty sure it installs a lot of this stuff, which we don't need. Back to driver, download and install, and yes. Yes, firewall, allow it through. Okay, and this will take uh, another good bit of time. Uh, I think I have to go in a couple of minutes, though. So let's check. What's, what's going on with chat? When I connect case fans to the motherboard, they won't work. Only work when directly connected to the power supply. Have tried all connectors on the motherboard. CPU fan does work. User, I think I think you uh, you commented that you you put that in chat maybe a week ago, and I think I, I went over basically just getting new fans. If your if your fans aren't controllable by the motherboard, and they only spin as fast as they you know as fast or they they spin as fast as possible when you plug them into the power supply, just get new fans. Uh, look in the description of this um, this YouTube stream. Um, there's a list of the hardware that goes into this computer, and one of them is that three three pack of fans for like 16 bucks, and these are going to do a fine job. So spend the the 16 or 20 bucks, whatever it costs for some for some new fans, and just be done with it. Lil Smoke says, what's your internet speed? Mine is 100 megabits per second um, down and 100 megabits per second up. Mine is a gigabit, so it's 1,000 um, megabits per second up and down. I think I can, if I if I wanted to, I could pay for two, two gigabits um, up and down, but um, I don't have any need for that. To use that speed, I'd have to get some new network adapters and a new switch and... There's nothing I do, including this, that uh, uh, requires or even comes close to using the one gigabits per second. Stop. All right, that was my alarm going off for when I needed to leave. And, um, yeah, I got to get going. So um, I should be able to come back here in a couple of hours, and we'll finish um, installing drivers, and I'll get the... Rear case fan plugged in, and uh, also update the BIOS. We'll do that when I come back. But thanks, y'all, for uh, for coming and uh, uh, interacting. That's that's great. Um, I hope uh, some of what you saw was helpful, including my boneheaded mistakes of putting things in in the wrong order and covering up things I needed to do. <laughs> um, all right. Bye, y'all. See y'all later.